Hey guys, welcome in that video about the new features of Golem 7. So right now I'm running Golem 7.0. And what I'm going to talk about in this video is the keyframeable attributes, which is the new addition, one of the new addition of the layout tool. If you haven't watched it yet, I'd recommend watching the introduction to the layout tool video. And when you're ready, you can jump back here. So keyframeable attributes means that some of the layers you're going to apply on your characters, the attributes of those layers can be specified per frame, so you'll be able to animate those attributes and get a more complex layout. So I've been exploring a really uh, simple simulation here of characters standing and playing an animation. And I would like them to face a different point. So if you do a stadium, that can be really convenient to have all the characters facing a specific position. So I'm going to open the layout tool. I'm going to drag and drop a selector node. And into the selector node, I'm going to specify that I want to specify every entities. So I'm going to use the star white card here. And I'm going to get drag and drop one of the new uh, layer node, which is the phase two. So the phase two means that I can ask my character to face a different position. So as soon as I collect my selector to my phase two, you can see that all my characters are facing some specific position, which is in the middle of the crowd. So let's take a look at the attributes of the phase two. So one is, uh, the first one is the position. And uh, another one is the relative to Barry center. So here it's enabled by default. So it means that all my characters will look into the mean positions of the groups. And they're just going to all look at that mean position. If you turn that off, instead of watching the Barry center, so the mean position, they're going to look the, at the scene origin. And obviously, that target position here is just an offset you're heading on top of uh, the Barry center or on the scene origin. So let's talk about that target position. You may have noticed that that attribute here has a use keyframe checkbox. As soon as you turn it on, you can see that your vector free attribute turns into a vector four attribute. So if I turn it off, the frames disappear. If I turn it on, the frame appear again. So it means that this attribute here can be keyframed. And if you look at the other attribute, they don't have that checkbox, so that means they're not animatable. So let's add keyframes. So you can add keyframes with the attribute editor here. You can press that plus button. And that's just adding a new line into that array there. And uh, just adding a new frame. And it has exactly the same values. So if I want to animate that attribute, I can change the frame value. I can set a keyframe at frame 100. And I can change the value of the x-axis and say 20. And you may have noticed that as soon as I enter that new value, my characters are adapting within the viewport. So they're facing an animated position. And as soon as I move, as soon as I move my timeline, now my characters just follow that keyframe position I've been specifying. So that's pretty neat. So as soon as I check that use keyframe buttons, if you check into the outliner, it has created three new Maya curves, one for the X, Y, and Z value. And those are just you know, regular Maya curves. So that means you can go into the animation editor, open the graph editor, and uh, animate, reanimate any of those values if you want to. So you can move it over, you can add keyframes. And if you refresh, you can see that now within your attribute editor of your layout tool, it has changing uh, the value and it's now different. So it can be just controllable the same way as any Maya objects. So one thing which is uh, maybe not really convenient here is that it's not really obvious where they're looking. We can like kind of imagine where they're looking, but there's no like regular object to see where they're looking. So as soon as you have keyframes enabled on your node, you can right click on your node and uh, click on the create locator for keyframes attributes. And as soon as you do that, if you check your uh, outliner, for keyframeable attributes, there's going to be a new locator in your scene. So that locator is uh, an actual Maya locator, which has the exact same keyframe than the one you've been specifying. So it actually shows 
what's the currently animated position of that attribute. And the really neat thing is that you can reanimate that locator. So I can grab that guy there, uh, move it into a different position, and set it a keyframe. And now you can see that your characters are adapting to that new position. And if you look into the attribute editor, you can see that the X value has changed. Make sure that here, don't delete manually the locator. If you do so, the keyframes will be deleted because the curves are connected to that locator. And if you just delete that locator, you'll delete the curve. So if you want to remove that locator from the scene, you can just right click on the node again and press the delete locator for keyframe attributes. And, and now it's been deleted, but the keyframes are still there. And if you want to bring it back, press the create again. And uh, if we want, we can add more in between value. So let's say we put it this on the side and set a keyframe there. And you had your keyframes that you had before, and but there's an in-between value now on the side. So if you take a look at the node, it has a new value for that new keyframe, which has but just been made by the locator. So it's really up to you. Uh, three different ways to animate keyframeable attributes. So you can use the attribute editor, you can use uh, the curves, or you can use the locator and reanimate that locator. So that's for the vector attributes. So let's look at uh, just disable the layer. So let's take a look at another layer, uh, which is a new one, which is a set frame layer. And that set frame attribute is obviously keyframeable. And you can do some really neat effects like a slow motion or fast pace shot if you want to. So let's take a look at the set frame. Let's uh, promote it as root. And by default, it has a floating value, which is a frame. And uh, just by default, it has a uh, one and 100 frames, which go to frame to 100. But you can say manually that you want to change that value, put a five. And uh, it now says that you're going to make an interpolation, an interpolation between frame one and five. And now you're having a super slow motion of your characters. OK. So this attribute as well can be controllable with a curve. So if you take a look into the outliner, there's a new uh, curve. So here, the float attributes curve set the exact same stuff from frame 1 to 100, from value 1 to 5. You can change that. But once again, if you want to, you can create a locator for that keyframeable attribute. And that's going to create another locator in your scene, which is here. And that locator, that the floating value will be animated on the y-axis of that locator. So you can see that my locator is going up and down, which represents the different values between 1 and 5. So if I want to add frame 100, I can change the value and set a keyframe. And now I'm just adding a, a different value here. And uh, if I take a look into the attribute editor, it plays between a, a different range of frames. So the vector free attribute is going to be represented as a 3D position into the environment, and the float value just be represented on the y axis. And whenever you're happy with that, you just have to uh, save your layout, render, and you get your layout operation being taken care of at rendering time. So I hope it makes sense, and see you into the next video.